Alright everybody, it's your best pal, Revolver84 here, uh, and today I'd like to talk about a review for the Thieves Guild DLC for the Elder Scrolls Online. So this is the third DLC for ESO, uh, and it's for the Thieves Guild. Now the Thieves Guild is one of the guilds within the Elder Scrolls Online, uh, so it's similar to the Majors Guild and the Fighters Guild. Um, but obviously, like the name says, it specialises in thievery, so it's thievery, it's extortion, it's blackmail, that type of thing. They're very much uh, illegals. So it, you're going to be focusing on things like your legerman uh, skill set and you do, you do get a new skill line as well. Um, obviously all the story uh, reflects that, so the basic story is that you come in contact with someone called Gwen, she's that lovely lass, uh, and she's desperate to join the Thieves Guild. Uh, at that point you don't really know why, which seems absolutely desperate too. So you go with her, you perform like a like a a tri trial, I guess, tryout, I guess, to uh, to join by raiding this uh, big stately home type of thing. You steal a few things, this, that, and the other. I'm not going to spoil it too much for you. And long story short, you get invited to join the Thieves Guild. So you go to Abba's Landing, which is in uh, Hughes Bain. Uh, you go down into the sewers, you meet Zara, who's the current head of the Thieves Guild. I say current because there was just pre just before you joined up another head of the Thieves Guild who uh, died during a. I'm going to say heist, or at least that's what you're led to believe type of thing, just went away and died. And uh, the Thieves Guild is under a lot of pressure from, a, I guess, the, the, their version of the police called the Iron Wheel, who are hunting them down systematically and trying to trying to remove them completely from, from Abba's Landing. So that's where you drop in. So you drop into a storyline where the Thieves Guild is very much in flux. Um, there's, there's a lot of things going on, and... There's clearly some sort of conspiracy which starts to unfold as you go through the main storyline. But in addition to that, there's also a lot of other people that you'll meet in there as well. So you'll meet people like, like Kari um, and uh, Seeks something, 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 <laughs> whatever the Argonian person is. And they give you all sorts of different things as well. Um, and each main character within the within the DLC has their own personal side quests as well, which deals with individual stories relating to just them. And um, they're nice to do. They don't progress the main storyline at all but does give you something else to do as well so what does that involve well that involves being a thief basically so that is pickpocketing people uh, that is uh, performing heists which are time-based activity where you go off into a particular location with the sole purpose of actually trying to steal something um, you've got to stay hidden um, you've got to avoid the guards and such like um, you've, there's uh, relics there's a big library in the well I say big there's a library that's what it's called anyway, in the uh, in the underground system. And there's a list of things that they want to steal, and you can go around uh, collecting them. There is obviously new delves um, to deal with as well. There's no dolmens, unfortunately, but there's, there's plenty of delves and things to do. Uh, and there's lots of dailies. Um, so one of the advantages of this game is, if you're particularly skint, um, the dailies are excellent sources of income. So you're talking like 302 gold, for like 15 minutes of your time that's how good they are um i always try to do them now now that i've got the dlc i'll probably try and do them dailies for a considerable period of time until the the homestead patch comes out so i can purchase stuff and things yeah they're pretty good now although there is a new area unlocked with the dlc uh hughes being um a lot of activity certainly for the dailies can take place outside of the dlc area what do i mean by that well i mean that your, your daily could be go to gratwood and pickpocket x amount of people it could be go to shadowfen and pickpocket x, x amount of people so it means that you could end up having to go into areas of the uh of nern of tamriel that you haven't seen before i had to actually find a way into ravenspear somewhere i've never actually been before myself uh, um, i mean as it turns out it was fairly straightforward i just found a guild mate and, and you know fast travel to them type of thing but i was pl planning out the route i was going on the map i was looking at what areas i hadn't locked and i was about to travel all the way through um so it does give you a little bit of um exposure to the wider world that you might not have seen before it's a breath of fresh air really it keeps you out of it one particular area for too long um and it means that the, the flora and fauna of the place is always changing you're always meeting new people so at that sort of level of pace it is quite good it has to be said like now in these places you've probably seen them already you get um, they're called thieves boxes so the the light up as if there was sort of like special law books or whatever and they're basically just like a box and in all the new all the original areas there's these boxes dotted around the map which can't be opened unless you have the dlc pack um i'm not going to lie yeah 
are there absolutely fantastic, brilliant things that you get out of there? Well, not really, no. You get a bit of gold and you get some items that you can sell off fence. Um, you, you're talking about maybe it's a couple of hundred at the most in terms of gold, in terms of monetary value that they get out of them. But the fact that they're there and they're for free, it's just another thing to collect in it, so you can't complain too much about that. I touched upon it before as well, so there is a new skill line as well. So obviously with you being a thief, you've already got your uh, your legerman uh, skills skill line, and I would recommend um, putting some skill points in there as you're progressing through the DLC. Um, if you haven't got any in there already, Specif specifically around things like pickpocketing, um, and if you want to make money fencing as well. But yeah, so there was a new skill line, which is your thieves guild skill line. Now that does complement your legerman, and it does make things a lot easier. Um, as a supportive sort of skill line but if you do have a pretty good thief uh legerman skill line then you, it shouldn't be too bad it's not like an essential thing to go through but it does give you some nice passives and such like um there's things like uh clemency there's things like um the guards um there's things like where you can have a bounty on you and it reduces the bounty over X amount over a certain amount of time. I think it's like three minutes or something. It starts to reduce the bounty faster and things like that. So it does have benefits to it, which are specific to being a thief because one of the things that you will be finding in this uh, DLC, uh, which came for a bit of a shock for myself, was obviously because you're going to be stealing all the time. You're going to be getting chased all the time and have huge bounties on your head. Now, I, prior to this DLC, I must admit, didn't do a lot of thievery or pickpocketing. I'm not saying I didn't do it at all. I did. But, but not to the sort of extent that this DLC requires. Uh, and certainly not to the point where I was having 6,000 gold bounties on my head and if I went into any sort of populated area I was getting chased all over the place by guards or expected to pay a fortune. So what you'll end up trying to do is you'll you'll want to perform all these pickpocketing things but at the same time you've got to balance it up against how many thieves uh, stolen things that, that you have on yourselves because obviously they will be taken off the guards. Now I'm not complaining at all about that because I have to be honest, it's a whole new mechanic of gameplay that up until this point uh, in my ASO life I haven't actually explored too much. I'm not saying like I say I didn't steal at all because I did but not to this sort of level of industrial extent where I'm making thousands and thousands of gold profit and stuff. Um, and it is a, a, a level of challenge and enjoyment that I hadn't already ex hadn't previously experienced going out into a specific environment and, and, and stalking a prey and, and, and trying to get up close and then pickpocket on them. It, it did give you something else to do. It was a whole other element of gameplay that up until that point I hadn't really uh, exposed myself to in, in a great deal. So it is something else that I really enjoyed and it's just another dimension that ASO brings. So, so far, so good, really. Like, I probably sit, you sit and think to yourself there, it sounds pretty good. Um, you know, you've got uh, new delves to explore, you've got new skill lines, you've got more industrialised exposure to the thieving mechanic that you have to perform, um, you've got more daily quests, so there is a lot of things there for you to do with a really interesting and intricate sort of main quest line. So, you're certainly sitting there thinking to yourself, that sounds pretty good. It does have its faults. I can't lie, there, there are some things matter with it. Um, the biggest one by a country mile um, is the darkness of, of, of the levels, specifically with the DLC. So obviously not the original uh, areas, so obviously not your Gratwoods and Shadow Fens and Dishans and places there, that they are obviously all coloured fine. Just the areas that come with the new, LD, new DLC, a lot of them are bloody dark. And when I say dark, I mean pitch black. I've had to stop doing what I'm doing to go to my TV uh, and adjust the brightness on it because it's been so dark I couldn't see the path in front of us. Um, obviously that's to complement the fact that you're supposed to be a thief and if you're in the dark it makes it easier to pickpocket or to sneak or whatever but not to the point that you can't actually see what you're doing yourself. It becomes a bit of a hindrance if I'm honest. Uh, another thing about it that that's not an enjoyable element is the actual Abu's Landon itself. Now Abu Land Abu's Landon is the main city within uh, the area, within the DLC. There are other settlements as well, but it is by far the biggest and most important. Now, the decor of it is absolutely champion. The NPCs are absolutely champion. It's got its own culture and style. And all that is excellent. My biggest problem with it is that it's an absolute bloody maze to navigate. Like, it's very vertical. I'm not talking about a level or two. I'm talking about three, four, five levels sometimes on top of each other, stacked on top of each other, you know. And you, if you take one wrong turn, you, you're lost. And you've, you've got to consult your map. And certainly progress at the start is very slow. 
The verticality of it as well makes it even more difficult when it comes to following objective markers. Now objective markers are, on this game have usually been, been quite good, alright, you might have a, the odd glitch once in a very short, you know, unlikely blue moon type of thing. But objective markers generally are on the spot, you know they're exactly where they need to be. <coughs> Uh, two problems with the objective markers with this DLC. First of all, because Abu's Landing in particular is so vertical, um, you could be right on top of it on the map and not even see it, your objective. And the reason being is because it's probably two levels above you. You, you could be sitting on the in the docks, for example, um, right on top of the objective, looking around, trying to figure out what you're doing wrong, and the person that you need to speak to for your objective could be two floors above you. And then you've got to go back into the city, you've got to navigate through the maze to try and figure out how you get upstairs, and it does take a bit of time, and like I say, until you get used to the city itself, it is a little bit frustrating. The other element of the objective markers I have to bring up, and it seems to be specific to this DLC, because I haven't experienced this before, but sometimes the objective markers are glitched. There's, 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 there's no other word for it. They're glitched, they're bugged, they are placed in areas that you physically can't get to. Now this isn't me just twisting because it's too dark and I can't see where I'm supposed to go or whatever. Uh, this is literally the objective markers are off the map and you've got to either leave the area entirely, <coughs> sometimes having to reset the entire uh, mission and if it's a daily you, you've if you're lucky, the, the, just leaving will come back and allow you to continue with the daily, but if not, you've lost that daily, that's, that's 302 gold plus laundered items um, of benefit for the time that you've already spent doing it, just because you can't get to a particular location, because the objective marker is telling you to go into a, black, a brick, brick wall, do you know what I mean? You can't go anywhere, it's extremely frustrating, and that has happened a couple of times, I have to say. Um, in addition as well, the, the I mean, there's a side note as well, the they are quite slow in changing, it seems. Since the um, th I've taken the DLC on, it seems the objective markers, particularly within um, the DLC area, um, if you if you leave if you leave a room, if you go out of a building, for example, so you, your objective markers above the door, <coughs> you know the the, the white the white sort of square with a semicircle on top and an arrow underneath it, telling you to leave that door. You'll go out the door, and then you out the door, and then traditionally your objective marker will be there, nice and clearly on your compass above your head saying, all right, you now need to go this way, and it's usually just a triangle pointing down. There's a delay, for some reason, on this DLC f to reflect that, so you'll come out the door, and your objective marker will either not be there at all, or your objective marker is marked as the door you just walked out of, which, you know, y you're wasting time. Now, I'm, I'm not saying this is hours and hours and hours, this would maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds, but it's 30 seconds, 40 seconds of every single time you're doing a, a quest almost within the DLC area, and it, it, it does get a bit frustrating. It's got to the point now that whenever I go on a quest within the area, and I uh, select it, I'll have to uh, place a manual marker exactly over where the uh, objective marker is, um, which, make, which might have been fine in other areas, but because, like I say, especially of the verticality of it, I would have otherwise used that, that manual marker to say this is where I need to go to to access the objective, i.e. I need to go to this level of stairs, put the manual marker there to go up them stairs to go to the objective marker. I can't do that because my objective and my manual markers now have to be placed at the same place, so that's a little bit frustrating. So, the Thievery Guild DLC has some good points, but has some bad points as well. So I'll quickly run through them. There's a good storyline. main storyline is really interesting. It's intricate. There is an opportunity to gain a lot of money in a short period of time. Uh, the mechanic, which a lot of you have obviously been using, but some people like myself are not really took too much interest in, that is the thieving side of the game. Um, it is open a whole new elements of, of gameplay to yourself, which is really enjoyable. Um, there are relics to be found, so it's, you know, for people who like to go out there and explore and find these things, there's relics to be found as well. New skill lines, obviously opportunities for skill points, so there's a lot of good things there. Or negatives as well, as we've discussed, the darkness, the, the labyrinth of Abu's Land, and, and the, the objective markers. So, with all, with all that into consideration, I've got to put things into perspective as well. So this DLC has progressed my character a lot. Um, it's progressed my character in terms of monetary value. He, he has a lot more money now. Um, uh, there is a lot of opportunity for uh, new 
gear sets and such like and things like that so my character has progressed so when I consider that and I consider the level of enjoyment I've had I consider the amount of exposure I've had to new mechanics and new d game styles and new dailies which is going to keep me entertained far after I've completed the main storylines I have to give it a score of 8 it's a pretty good score you know it's 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 far above average um, the only frustrating thing is is that it would have been higher had it not have been for things like darkness which the developers can fix the developers can resolve they've made the active decision to make these things dark and I get it it's to fit in with the with the style of the game and such like similarly with the Abu's land and they've designed it intentionally that way they've designed it to be a labyrinth they've designed it to be a maze and I, and I get that it's to do with obviously the diversity of cultures and such like but the frustrating thing is, is it's that these very things that they intentionally put into the game are the things that have scored it down it could have gotten an 8.5 might have even gotten might of even getting a nine it had not have been for these issues but eight is a pretty good score and i would recommend it to anyone out there even those who aren't interested in particularly thieving activity because once you do get it you might not be interested in it initially but it will sort of grab your attention and you will sort of enjoy that sort of type of mechanic within the game so i hope you've enjoyed this review let us know what you think in the comments below don't forget to subscribe take care everyone all the best